tried to do a time lapse but there's no point the sky is still and there's no cars about so i'm just gonna have to stay mobile now just to give you a kind of idea of the kind of money that was around here next door to john laird was hsbc's first bank that's where that's where it started these weren't cheap to get involved with you would look in at like a hundred grand 1800s off the top of my head About two million pound each. <laughs> Town hall's open, but I think it's strictly business today. I have been in. Is it okay to record a little video? I don't know, I'll ask them. Alright, um, is it okay to start making a little video in the spare case or? Yeah, not really, not even around it, it's somewhere around it. As I thought, strictly business today. Now, right behind me is Laird. This is probably where the spies would have came to draw the sketches to send away to Abraham Lincoln. In October 1874, John Lair fell off his horse up in Bidston, so they say. I actually looked up the obituaries and the news articles and in the London Times, I think it was the London Times. I've got a screenshot, I'll, I'll throw it in there. But the official story was he fell off his horse, died in number 63, Hamilton Square. I actually done a bit of digging. And it turns out he made a full recovery. Went to London, went to Parliament, got sick, came home, then died. Call me paranoid, but this was around the time when there was a poison epidemic going on. And John, before he died, he was complaining that he had stomach pains. Now, the reason I looked into poisoning side of things is because a lot of people prominent people from Liverpool all died around the same time all of them none of them of old age either and every single person when you look into it, there's always there's always a question, an asterisk. Say Robert Peel, sudden death, broken rib. I was looking through his obituaries, and some of them said you had a lot of enemies in the later parts of your life. Not only this coincide with the Masonic Rebellion. There was also political pushback. I'm not sure on the policy, but there was a policy that would have ruined docks. William Huskinson, he was in charge of trade at the time, and he was avidly against the policies that they were trying to bring in. He died, ran over by a train. The official story, once again, the official story says 
He got excited. He was running alongside the train and it ran him over. Reading the police reports, the obituaries and Sir Robert Peel's Sir Robert Peel's speech in court. He raises some 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 good questions. And one of those questions was why didn't the train driver stop 20 miles per hour from 50 meters away? Standing start, revs it, goes. Huskinson panics. He's looking left and right. Everyone panics because no one's really seen a, a train. Like people were shocked when you hear the descriptions of what happened, they described it as a monster. There was also 10 engineers on that train and many, many people. And they only asked one person, the Duke of Wellington. The Duke of Wellington tried to help him, but everyone else stared. And when they asked the driver, why didn't you stop? He weren't meant to be going because the train had stopped. People were chatting, people were walking across the lines and stuff. He just revved, couldn't stop it. There was no other incidents of things like this happening where it couldn't be stopped because the train actually afterwards continued on with its journey. And then later on the way back, it fell, it fell. And he held it up by a rope. I'll try and get the picture. It's quite hard to find, but I'll try. And a little discovery that my mind connected was the SS Alabama built by Johnny Boy. Street name named after it. Thank you.